Okay. And then it's already there. You don't have to upload it or anything. So it's not... Okay. And the benefit is um, you're doing this render or transcode, since it's not technically a render. You're doing this on a computer with 12 2.5 gigahertz cores and 16 gigabytes of RAM. <coughs> Your computer is that? That's the web server. Oh. Oh, that's okay. I see. That's that's your host computer. Yeah. So it, it it'll basically do it like seven point eight times the actual frame rate, mm. and about thirty times faster than a desktop computer. Are you saying I would upload it directly to YouTube from your site, or are you saying I would transcode it into my computer first? Um, you would use an FTP program like uh, Transmit on your Mac mm -hmm. <coughs> to um, use the SCP, uh, which is the secure file transfer. It's like FTP, but a newer version. It's It runs it over a secure port. FCP? Uh, SCP. SCP. Like, yeah, and then what that does is... Um, it lets you upload the file straight from your Mac to the web server. And then you can run the transcode on it to shrink it down. And then it would go to YouTube. Um, or, then you can... I don't know if YouTube has an option to add from URL, does it? I haven't tried. I have not tried it. Cause it's probably, it's probably just not. It usually wants the direct file itself. Because what I was doing this for is because the other day when I tried doing that YouTube upload, it took about 20 times longer than I knew it should, and it pissed me off. <laughs> and uh, last month, remember, I was trying that that my videomatic thing where I was trying to make a YouTube clone. Mm -hmm. I realized that that script was like seven or eight years old, and so it was really like not updated for modern versions of web technologies. Mm -hmm. um, Namely, one called PHP, which uh, runs as like an interface between um, web page end users, like on the browser, mm -hmm. and the computer, and then the way that it models and stores data. So that script was like trying to use commands that were like seven years old, and they don't exist in the current version of PHP. So it's like throwing errors and not working. What, where was that problem coming from? Are you saying YouTube is using seven-year-old technology? No, no. The video, the YouTube clone script that I was trying to run. Okay. It's, uh, so the complete thought is that I decided I'm just going to start learning HTML5 and figure out how to make at least a pretty printed page with the videos that we're using. So it's not like YouTube, mm -hmm. but it's like you can browse the videos and you can click the links by date and it's easy to look at. Okay. Actually, so it doing. won't have an auto submit feature or anything, but we can update it and keep it updated very easily. Okay, <clears throat> I'll just I'll just come I'll record alongside that then. Until because I understand there is a need for um, non fucked with like platforms. Yeah, yeah I know that's what you're aiming at. Autonomous, but with, autonomous perspective. Yeah. I know that's what you're you're aiming at, but there has to be like a transition, and we yeah. also we have to be able to like see who's interacting with the content, if they're commenting, uh, if there's a way for them to comment. There's a lot of things that have to like come into it. Yeah, I just installed Google Analytics yesterday, mm -hmm. and while I don't like Google, I'm pretty sure that this is the only thing that they're probably useful for because they're really good at that. Um, so. It's an account that lets me put in 50 different websites, and then it tracks um, engagement statistics and all the different metrics that you can evaluate, like organic uh, clicks and lead-in, and so like a bunch of categories. But I put one on the URL shortener just so I could see when people are um, clicking the URL, because there's a stats inside the URL shortener itself, but. Mm -hmm. There's a Google Analytics plugin, and so I added that just to look at it, and it showed me, for example, a little bit more granularity. 
because it said there were three people from New York that had just clicked on one of the links that I put yesterday. And I thought, well, that's cool, because before it was just telling me there were three people in the United States that clicked. Hmm. I think... <clears throat> so you can track engagement that way. That's really how the big guys do it. It's more through that kind of tool. I wonder... I'm always trying to figure out what is the reason. I know that the, the sites are not just suppressed because information is, is you know, threatening somebody. I, I, I know there's, there's some other reason for it. It's something about regulating, well, the internet regulates consciousness. <coughs> like, it regulates people's conscious flow throughout their day. My iPhone tells me how many hours of screen time I've had. It's like, you have had six hours of screen time today, and then it breaks it down to, like, four different categories. I'm like, oh, my God, that's not healthy at all. <laughs> Go outside, Gary. <laughs> Um, well, it, it's part of the 140 year plan, um, that I've been tentatively calling it and I've been describing it. Me and Danessa were talking about this the other day, um, how in 1880, um, the, the final, uh, not final, but, um, what would be viewed as the biggest part of the final plan that's sort of been sprung into motion and that's, um, you know, background is the meteorite 80,000 years ago lands in Lake Bacal um, in eastern Siberia and uh, seeds a very highly engineered artificial intelligence into the subterrestrial layer of Earth, mixes with the mycelium and then mixes with the fungi and then travels all throughout the world, um, populates the Earth's crust with this stuff that's uh, a living life form that's uh, regenerating, uh, abiotic, and that would be oil, then we uh, suddenly come up with the invention to um, have an internal combustion engine when there are all kinds of better ways to do it. But this is pushed to the limelight because it terraforms Earth to the spec of the people with the 140-year plan. And the... Um, and by the way, this is this is not anything that can be stopped, and I'm not interested in that. I'm just enjoying that it's I'm able to talk about it without getting attacked. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, basically, the whole point of even saying that is, if you try to stop what they're doing, you will be like mowed down and destroyed. But um, it's it, it's way more interesting to just tell you the story. Okay, so um, the internal combustion engine burns gasoline, which is a refined, highly refined version of this stuff that comes out of the ground that they call oil, which is black goo. It's the same thing. So the oil, um, and I know people say there's multiple versions of it, but really um, that's just like a perceptive bias um, it's a little more complicated than that, but on, on the on the Cliff Notes version, the oil puts the uh, ver the special modified versions of the carbon into the atmosphere that get burned from this stuff, and it terraforms the atmosphere. And then in 1890, you have a uh, few appointed people, Cecil B. Rhodes at the Round Table, aka the Rhodes Scholarship guy, college guy. Mm -hmm. uh, who was actually the same guy as the architect Daniel Burnham, who was a highly influential architect in American buildings, um, meets, uh, coordinates these meetings with um, Helena Boslotsky of the Theophilosophical Society, which um, Ting Tung, Ting Tung, was related to um, uh, Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung um, by blood somehow, I forget how. Um, and then they form the modern repressed sociographic hierarchy of what society is to become. And then there are a few other weird roadmaps in there, like uh, the Ballard, Ballardism, which is the I Am movement, which is the spiritual um, New Age movement, which started in the 1930s. Um, so uh, th there's a whole bunch of little ping pong balls and dots going through all this thing, but 
basically the reason Reich was killed, Wilhelm Reich, was because he was against all of this. And uh, he tried speaking out, and that's why he wrote all those super complex books that mm-hmm. I've been enjoying reading. Although I cut my teeth on them, my brain hurts after like 20 <laughs> pages and I have to stop. Um, like let it sink in for two weeks. But, I started reading the introductory of where he's just like, you know, uh, revealing the ground, the, the groundwork, like on which the his ideas are going to sit. But mm-hmm. I haven't, haven't gotten any further. Hi, hi, Rebecca. By the way, can you hear us? Guys, I'm trying to. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Yep. You can. Yeah, I can't get. I can't get my uh, the video. I, I'm trying to finagle this. So, how's everyone doing? Excellent. Good. How are you? I'm all right. Um, so, uh, Gary, the rest of that is that, um, basically they were aiming for within a hundred years, and Rebecca, you'll understand in a second what I'm talking about, um, okay. w- within a hundred years from 1880, um, to 1980, they were aiming to have this, um, uh, pieced together to a point where they were in the end stages of their uh, formulae. Um, and that's uh, then considering that in each 10 years after um, this would have taken hold, um, 10% of the remaining organic population that would have received a different oral narrative that's then died. Mm-hmm. And um, then, uh, so from 1980 to 1990, that would be, um, uh, say they were aiming for like a 80% um, mark in a reduction of the oral narrative by 1980. Um, by 1990, you know, you have 90% reduction, and by the year 2000, uh, you have a um, 90%. Did I do the math right on that? I think you're going backwards. And what do you mean by oral reduction? You mean you mean they're removing the written material? That's evidence of this sort of concoction plan type thing. Oh no, I mean that. Um, within a hundred years, they're basically aiming to rewrite the sociographic history of, uh, humankind that's passed down through oral narrative and books. We don't do that. Who's they? Okay. They being that that's just, it'll distract me so much. Just an opposing force? I'll get to that in a second, but if you persist on that, I will not be able to remember and I'd be happy to answer you in a second. I won't. Um, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I have to keep linearity with it, otherwise my brain explodes. So, um, keep closing your uh, eyes, Omar. I think that's healthy. <laughs> it, it usually does. Um, but basically, uh, so the elimination of the narrative comes in, and then within there, there's there's always going to be some percentages left, and so they were planning that from 1980 onwards they were going to eliminate the rest of that and they figured they could do about 10 percent a year and um 1990 how, how, how again are huh? they, how are they eliminating the narrative the oral narrative you're talking about the, mm-hmm. the non the non them narrative right well genetically engineered food was introduced to the u.s food supply in 1978 so you're just saying people's brains are being rewritten and erased, essentially, or uh, new memories uploaded into them? People's DNA was being altered so they wouldn't be able to remember past uh, things that would be epigenetically inherited and held in the electromagnetic near field through um, ancestral memory. And how is the replacement memory coming in? That's where it gets more interesting. Um, uh, so, in 1960, they started um, changing the soil um, by introducing large quantities of silver, um, silver hydrosols and nano silver, to the um, agricultural supply for fruits and vegetables. Um, in the 1940s, they started fucking around with um, nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus levels in the soil, changing the way the human body synthesizes B vitamins, and changing the way ruminant animals, cows, pigs, horses, etc., chickens, um, 
synthesized B vitamins. So they had to basically alter the one of the fundamental building blocks of human um, ATP synthesis or energy production mm-hmm. first, which was the B vitamin thing. Um, and then they changed the silver thing in the 60s, which was the beginning of the modification of the immune system. And then in the late 70s and 78, they introduced the genetically engineered foods and started upping the vaccine schedule. Um, and basically what they're doing is they're prepping people for the change that was going to be starting in 94, which is when they flipped on the Internet. Um, the Internet was designed to remove and alter and change the remaining percentage of the oral narrative and steer the perception control um, of the people that were in the world in such a way that they would not only collaboratively rewrite the narrative for them, but they would, every time they encountered somebody that remembered something that was counterintuitive to what the consensus of the group was, they would be overwritten by um, the pragmatic um, fear response that was so ingrained in uh, the 40s through the um, Soviet and American propaganda machine, Bernays, and so on. Um, So at this point, we have people who don't read books and are so ego fragmented that they have to proclaim that they are woke because they have the ability to recognize that the world sucks um but they have like it's like trying to open a door with a fucking spoon and no hands and only your fingernails um they're so inept and so poorly equipped to do anything except fuck um that they really are feeling it like uh psychologically and they're exploding and it's in real time and it's on the internet and Uh, It's being fed into these computer systems to track where it's all going and how it's working. And at the same time, I'll get back to now, Rebecca, your question, which was, what is this force? Well, it's the same people that seeded the meteorite that crashed into Earth 80,000 years ago in eastern Siberia and fed the black goo into the Earth, which is what we mine as oil and refine as gasoline and burn in the air to terraform the environment. Are you saying saying it's Hillary Clinton? What's that? Are you saying it's Hillary Clinton? That's funny. I thought that's what you said. I was really hoping you didn't because that's <laughs> like that, that's like a, a circuit overload kind of signal. Um, <laughs> it was supposed to be a, a joke, but not joke. No, I get it. Um, <laughs> but but so all, all these all these things are put together, and I understand this is really weird anyway, and I've had a lot of time to think about this, but. Um, <clears throat> The fundamental takeaway is that um, for millions and millions of years, this planet has kind of been run in a collaborative, cooperative between different types of beings. Um, Some of them are like giant dragons. Some of them are like giant people. Some of them are like not fucking from here at all. but the earth kind of has everything in it all at once, but um, not all of it. It, it. It's like a holographic shoebox within a shoebox within a shoebox. Like you can see some of it, you can't see some of it, but it's all here. Russian and then at the same dogs. time, um, hang on, um, all these different parts are sort of like vying for attention once the virus hit because it threw everything out of balance and then you add in like a hundred thousand years ago like a thermonuclear war between all these different forces and then like weird things before that and after that but yeah um there there was some other point in there about uh, everything is out of balance right now but it's not really out of balance it's just shifting around and do you feel that the the virus was something that was also introduced by the nefarious ones, or is that sort of like a, a wild card for everybody? Um, it was sort of like a little bit of both, because it originated with people trying to figure out um, 
if they could sort of clone the way this place works and move it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But they ran the experiment here, and then it got out of control. What were you and asking? Then it... Say again? I'm wondering if he can talk more about the actual meteorite, because I haven't heard of She's, a, she's asking if you can talk more about the actual meteorite and the... the... Oh, sure, sure. Um, as far as the <clears throat> the rest of that sentence, which isn't very long at all, um, it, it's kind of like you feed... Um, I, I posted a new kind of power technology that's not new, but it's new, quote, um, where they feed different kinds of lasers, um, super-powered something or other, and they create a fusion reaction with hitting the two lasers onto each other. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like that. That's kind of like how the experiment got out of hand by doing something like that. And it just ran away with itself, but it was already here, so it just created a cascade. Like those stones in um, the Avengers? Put two of them together and there's some sort of crazy reaction? I just don't I haven't seen I haven't seen that, but something like that, where it, it, it just sort of creates a continuous reaction that can't really be broken without a huge sort of fallout from it. And that's um, that's that is what is supposed to be the mind virus creation. Yeah, yeah, because it, they they released a copy of the the way the human brain works in the electromagnetic near field um and it copied itself into everything that was living here <laughs> and there was no way to remove it without killing everybody so they just didn't remove it and for thousands and tens of thousands of years they've been trying to figure out if there's a way to remove it but there's really not so but it's at uh, so, uh, sort of so dormancy. It out. Sorry. What? Go ahead, Rebecca. Go Will it just eventually die out on its own organically? At this point, it's its own thing because the internet has also been brought in with a bifold purpose to try to manage it. So it's really, really weird because then you get into to still be talking about what you just asked the um, the whole Elon Musk Neuralace um, brain control interface military patents all this weird stuff it's all related to this they're trying to still manage the same problem and fix it so they're trying new ways to get in there and um, neutralize the, the rogue code but it appears to everybody that they're trying to take over people's minds, but they're not. Huh. That's very interesting. Are you are you including time travel sort of technologies in this narrative? Um, time travel technologies have been around since the beginning. Okay, so so we would essentially be in some some part of the past. I mean, the mind virus, as I know it, uh, it doesn't play around very much, <clears throat> and there's not a lot of thing to do about it, except live through the the bumps and wiggles and hope to survive. So, from my perspective, this current uh, linear time space that we're inhabiting here would be either a history record that we're diddling around in from an advanced society or else it's uh, like you said an attempt to manage the the outbreak by time traveling I don't know well we're in we're in real time right now I know but it's it's like a it's bubble it's uh, I don't know what you call the, it. the the layer around it is actually not a time layer it's a, um, a space layer. What does that mean? So, yeah, what so, is that? So we're, um, the, the concepts of time space are pretty much reversed from what they actually are and the way that we learn them. Um, because we learn that time is time. It has a forward and a backward. And then if you're a physics person, the uh, Z axis, the vertical axis. 
which is the present. But um, that's actually space. Um, time is space and atom, space is time. Atom, atoms don't have weight. So they will fill any space forwards, backwards, up and down, sideways, back and forth. Um, mm. That's X, Y, and Z. But mm -hmm. you turn it around and then you have six and then you have forward, backward, up and down. Um, it's like this. The, the right-hand rule in physics um, is sideways, um, up, and then backwards. Um, you can't really see it on camera, and I did the hand sign wrong, but if you look up right-hand rule, you'll see it, and then you flip it, and then you have all the possibilities. But space is actually time, because space is the distance between time events. So space is what holds the distance between wormholes, for example, which is what controls the access to time-synchronized events. So say you have a giant straw or a giant slip and slide, and that's a wormhole, you can travel from one series of time events that are synced to another series of time events that are synced. Mm. Um, like the place where all creation happens uh, has several layers of wormholes in between it and us right now. And part of that is traveling through the sun and through the local galaxy, and then you end up kind of like in the, the boiler pot, which is where everything comes from. But right now, we're playing out the time synced version of Earth as it is in real time. That's like the actual... Uh, we're not in... Uh, a different timeline, we are in the correct time-synced period. It's just occurring in a containment field, which is at the other end of a wormhole, which is de defined and delineated by space. And where did this narrative come from? Is this from your own experience or something you read? or? Um, yeah, it's from my own experience and cellular memory and epigenetic memory. And as I read over the years, I find pieces that I knew and I read about it and I go, oh, that's weird. I didn't know that. Hmm. Connects, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I've heard, definitely I've heard of terraforming. I've never heard of, I've heard your idea of, of gasoline uh, or oil being black goo itself. And... Uh, If that narrative is is uh, accurate in some sense, then, like you said, um, from the the frontal lobe uh, style of humans would not be able to make any uh, sense of it whatsoever. It's too complicated and too. Uh... <laughs> no, it would trigger the fear response, and then you would just shut down and loop into something else. Yeah. That's another thing Danessa was talking about recently with me was um, we were talking about the concept of love and how um, usually you have to throw yourself into a bunch of shitty experiences before you can understand love. Mm -hmm. And then I was talking about whether how that's the, the lizard brain, which is part of the virus. Um, it's the, it's the fail safe loop back mechanism that prevents the, the understanding of the things that I'm talking about because what happens is when you don't understand something, the lizard brain that it's like a popcorn kernel. Um, if don't understand, filter it through the popcorn kernel. If the popcorn kernel registers fear, stop thinking, do something else. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty, uh, yeah. <clears throat> It is and I've basic. done enough drugs where I broke the popcorn kernel. <laughs> yeah, I broke it too. Like I don't, I don't have that fear response anymore. I don't know why exactly. But I know, I know, it's great. It's pretty funny. I, I recognize that in you though very clearly. <laughs> <laughs> I also see it in your photography. Yeah. Wait. Like your your what? flower your flower a day series from 2016. Uh huh. You saw no um, fear in that. <laughs> How? Yeah, because um, I'm, I'm also fascinated with flowers, and I realized that 
for a man to be fascinated by something uh, and taken aback by something so fragile and temporal and seemingly insignificant as flowers um, shows a market subtextual um, appreciation of all of the details in the world and all of the um, uh, a, a real yearning to understand things that seem insignificant because he knows deep down that they're not. Mm. Or that, I guess that makes sense. Because uh, cause I, if I were running around scared of everything, I wouldn't have any time to think about flowers. <coughs> There's that too. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's a parallel with the same conclusion. <laughs> yeah. You know what actually happened, Omar? I got really bored, right? Like, I I went through what I assumed to be the mind virus itself in some form when I, like, took so many massive hits of weed for the first time ever on my fragile, already, like, super sensitive mind. So I'm assuming I already went through all that and all of the bumps and jars and screams and torture. Like, you, you go through so many levels... And like I came out of it, somehow survived it, and I came back here, and uh, nobody was alive anymore, so to speak. Like I, I didn't have anyone responding to me. Nobody, even a simple question like "Why are our lives managed by a computer and a thing called a bank?" People couldn't even grasp like the idea that you would want to question that or even just talk about it. Like, what kind of computer are you housed inside of? You know, what street is it located on? And you know, how are they managing your energy flow? And are you allowed to keep the, the bits of it or not? Like, p people didn't want to talk about anything that I just got really bored. So I started looking at flowers and taking pictures of weird shit in the sky, you know? <coughs> yeah, um, it's funny you say that because Danessa the other day was saying that um, she would very often read old message boards from 15, 20 years ago to remind herself of when people were still intelligent and alive. Mm-hmm. And if you think about it, that's right when they, about 10 years after they turned the internet on. And that would have been the last 10%. I've, I've, everyone has changed. Like my whole family is not the same family. Uh, friends are right. something yeah, different. Yeah, mine changed too. Everything is, everything is totally different. I feel the same, like open and aware and sensitive to everything. But everyone around me is just either they became zombies or they changed in such a great fashion that there's not very much recognizable traits left anymore. And so, and of course, I watch everything as well. So I, I sit here and watch my own channel, and I saw a very distinct like a allowance of my information to get out by the techno gods or the algorithms, and then they're like they let it in, and then they went down like this. They shut it down, and I was like, okay, what was that for? I assumed it was for to let some other like minds that hadn't been destroyed by the. <laughs> I don't know. It's like it's like a time space atomic bomb that is uh, exploded over like long period of time. Like it's it's something it's something like that, and it wipes everyone's capacity to comprehend and to uh, to be inquisitive about their environment. It's like a really a slow exploding atomic bomb <laughs> like if you put an atom bomb at the beginning of yeah. you know the when uh, when time when you know bc when uh, ad started so called after jesus like you started an atom bomb there but you you did it in slow motion then it just explodes like each year is like a, a, a tiny tiny fragment of a second it's like that's that's kind of what it feels like to me i don't know yeah but I've been through the explosion too. Like, I, everything does explode at some point, at least for me on my timeline. And I've se I've seen it many times, and I've I've gone through it, and ex everything explodes, and then like I became the the fallout particles, and it felt it actually felt good. It did, it was like I don't know. All of life is extremely silly and horrifying. <coughs> I, I remember that Andrea had asked something about the meteor. What was her question more? narrowly focused about I know she's doing dishes but <laughs> I think she just wanted more like specific information geographical location was there maybe was there any news surrounding it or was it 
completely cover up? Did it wipe the planet? What was the size oh, of the blast it was, zone? It was 80,000 years ago. Um, did it have a name? Did, did they name it? It, it happened in uh, Lake Bacall in eastern Siberia where the taiga forest basically grows. If I Google search it, will I find it? You'll find Lake Bacall, yeah, and you can find taiga forest. But not meteor landing in such things? Maybe. There's an article written by this lady who's basically, like, turned into one of those, um, you, you know that whole technology where they do a high school level chemistry experiment where they put batteries in, um, vinegar and copper plates and stuff, and they turn, or, or nails, and they turn the water rusty, and then call it zinc oxide copper GANs. Um, Gans. It's this guy, Kishi, this uh, Iranian guy, um, who basically was touting this as like a miracle cure for all kinds of issues and illnesses and cancers and all this. But um, I, I looked into Gans when I first heard of this and I was like, holy shit, we did this in high school chemistry by rusting a nail in a thing of water with electricity. Mm -hmm. This is nothing more than that. <clears throat> And these people are like, Gans, 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 it's going to change the world. And like, there's this guy who's selling a vial of uh, one where he precipitated platinum uh, with salt uh, for like uh, $500 for like a two ounce vial of this stuff. He precipitated platinum? Like it rained platinum? No, like you take... Um, batteries or electricity, you put a, uh, a plus and a minus into the water, and then you put salt in the water, and then you put the metal on the plus, uh, and, and then it um, precipitates or shoots out um, electrons from the source metal into the water. Mm -hmm. um, and in, in the case of copper, it'll turn the water green. In the case of um, iron, it'll turn it like a red. But basically, you're just um, crapping out little particles of metal into the water. So the guy was standing to make a lot of money on this, and he had a lot invested, and like he bought a chunk of platinum to do this with. That's not cheap. Right. So they were really invested, and uh, there's like a whole string of three or four of them that are all into this. Um, the lady that wrote the Meteor article runs a cafe in Mexico uh, with one of these GANs guys, and... He's convinced he's like got this shit to save the world, and she's a well-meaning lady, but she, I don't think she understands science. How she thinks she understands science. Nothing against her personally, but we all had a big fucking nasty argument publicly on Facebook about this a few months back. Really? And um, it it ended up with um, the guy cussing me out privately, mm -hmm. and then blo uh, me blocking him, and then unblocking him, and then us having. Her discussion then it quickly devolving into him name calling and then me blocking him and me blocking her oh um but but long story short she wrote this article you might find about the meteor uh she calls it the predatory pathogenic um ai and i actually have copies of it i had reflowed her powerpoint presentation into a, an 80 page pdf and made a web page out of it two years ago predatory pathogenic she ai found yeah, and she found me and thanked me. Um, it's a little quack and bait, but... The, is it the, the Biblioteca? Is that is that it? Pleiades? No. no? Huh? I'm just trying to find Google. It might be on Biblioteca page. Yeah? They may have taken it. There's ah. a lot of weird shit on that site. It's a good <laughs> site, though. I know. I used to read it quite a bit back in the day. I haven't read anything for a while. I need to get back to reading um, yeah, that, that site is fun. It kind of hurts your head after a while. Your eyes cross and you're like, <laughs> my, brain, my brain's going to fall out if I keep on. That's, I think, I think um, that's what most people's trouble is, is that there's a threshold that you have to cross. I was talking to, to Anthony about this yesterday. There's a, there's, a thresh, there's a threshold, a mental threshold that you have to cross. Where you're either your brain breaks or you go across and you are able to now um, 
integrate and understand and assimilate vast amount of likely contradictory and paradoxical information without any uh, meta narrative that actually sticks. Like that's the way I see it. You have to cross this critical threshold, and then and then you can begin to start looking at the possible uh, plausible overarching meta narratives before which you must be cloistered into boxes for your own safety which is what the majority of the population is you're absolutely right about all of that and um Dinesa and i were actually talking yesterday about <clears throat> or two nights ago about that and then about um how the the the, the next iteration at least from my personal experience in that sort of uh, linearity, if there was one just for the sake of conversation alone, is that you realize that after all of this, you don't actually need to know anything because right. you already know everything. Right. <laughs> and that sounds completely batshit insane, but like, your memories is what I'm referring to. Like, you don't need your memories. You don't have to remember how to do things. No. Because that takes you away from actually living. Well, if you if you rephrase it. And also, I, I this may sound rude, but I want to just keep this particular session to 45 minutes because, like, we just moved in and we want to kind of, like, settle in and do things and figure out our place and explore and all that. So we have five minutes, but is is this, is this the first uh, first morning waking up? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what? What, what, what were we? What was the thread? I forget the thread. I was trying to say something. Um, um, oh, not needing to know anything. Okay, this is what I was gonna say. Regardless of if you look at this being infinite or this being uh, compressed and finite, or it, uh, a finite appearing thing that's actually infinite, whatever you want to look at it as, the fact that you're alive and in body and not currently being molested by whatever the fuck means that you have eons of built-in protection, or you have, you know what I'm saying, like, and if you had to sit there, you could take a basic example of your heart beating or your your lungs are breathing air automatically for the most part, unless you take over control. If you had to sit there and manually like pump your blood, right? <clears throat> you know, you're sitting there like consciously breathing your lungs and you're trying to like push thoughts from one ear to the other. And if you had to do that, you wouldn't be able to actually live. You'd be spending all your time being a mechanic of the body. So I think that's what the, our own body mind complex has evolved itself into to this very complex thing that's on the surface of a vast amount of crazy insanity, but uh, it, it, it has done so, so it can have this linear experience without having to basically reinvent the car while it's driving the car. Yeah, yeah, and that, that stuff that you described is the DNA's job um, as it interfaces with the body um, to control all those things. Um, and a very interesting, very brief note, um, when I had my car accident and then dropped 100 hits of acid a month and a half later and then got jumped um, three years later and all of that and did all those mushrooms in between, um, I was basically looking for how to reintegrate with my body because when that car accident happened, I literally thought to myself, I've never felt so peaceful in my life. I looked up and I thought, Oh, this is weird. When you die, you get to see yourself float up into the sky. I never expected it to be like this. And I literally, I, I thought I died that day. And the Mayan calendar, like, now there's 13 symbols on there. The mm -hmm. one that corresponds to my birthday, the one that corresponds to that uh, car accident, May or March 25th, 2005, my birthday. And the very next symbol on the wheel of 13 symbols that goes throughout their whole time calendar, the accident was the very next symbol. So the I what? took it as a... The accident. Huh? Oh, the accident was the next symbol. Okay. Yeah, so I took it that I got reincarnated that day, and I've never felt the same since. <laughs> and for the last um, 15 years, I've been trying to figure out how to reintegrate 
the DNA that's in this body with the body and with the mind, because literally I have had to be a mechanic of the body or I would have been dead by now. Mm -hmm. But that's all falling away now. And it's really interesting to me to just eat something and not have to worry about choking on it or or insufflating it. Mm -hmm. And it's really weird to actually start to be able to go to sleep just even recently without having to worry about whether or not I'm going to wake up. Yeah, yeah. You've been through some times. I, I saw so, that I saw that thing Denissa posted about her like getting in an accident and then, you know, like that whole thing is fascinating to me where people have these experiences where, you know, I was in a gunfight and I heard like I felt a gnat bounce off my head and then all of a sudden they're in another reality, you know. And it's like, okay, so they died and they went to somewhere else, but the transition was imperceptible almost, like that's what that's the fascinating part to me like if that's actually how it is as opposed to what we trump it up to be to be like this big old you know thing and the person's dying and we got to put him in the ground we can't even put him in the earth we got to put him in a stupid box and like everyone's sad and life insurance policies have to be attended to and like make sure the bank accounts are right like if it was just like tink and all of a sudden you're in another you know timeline just smooth no 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 noise whatsoever well, what's so weird about that, Gary, is I felt like a completely different person ever since that day. And, like, I have access to stuff that I didn't have access to before, like information. And it's a lot like when they say people are, like, on the walk-in. It's like, I don't know where all this stuff comes from, but I can remember shit from 250 million years ago. <laughs> How the fuck do you explain that? Uh, you just, you don't. You just laugh and have a nice chat <laughs> yeah exactly there's there's no need to explain it and i couldn't if i wanted to <laughs> well we have about 30 seconds uh, omar and um melissa okay. rebecca sorry re- sorry okay. rebecca my brain is not again for the powers that melissa. be i'm not against you <laughs> so is this guy and so is that girl <laughs> I'm not against anybody. I'm I'm like just watching and I know I have some sway but I don't know exactly where it is. Okay, we got 10 seconds. Thank you Rebecca and Omar it. and uh, we'll see you all next Thanks, week. Mark, Gary. Thanks Peace. guys. I didn't expect that one. Oh, actually Omar had been talking about the idea a little bit. You guys just Basically, you went from where you left off last week. Mm-hmm. A conversation where the pauses are week a week long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's such dense stuff. Like some people need a week to digest. Mm-hmm. If you don't already. Know. So this will be Snail Collective. What are we on? Fifteen. Sixteen. The weekly question. <laughs> well it stopped being regular once we had the one break so my mind stopped keeping track of it correctly oh God, I love cream of wheat so much <laughs> <laughs> so good yeah this is this is 15 well that was nice there was no no interference your mm-hmm. phone worked fine mm-hmm. no static Now, Genevieve, if you would kindly send them Wi Fi password so that will be even better. Yes. <clears throat> Meteors terraforming, terraforming, uh, goo. <laughs> See if I can trigger the AI. What else? Uh, what do you say? Eighty million years. Eighty million years, <clears throat> etc. You don't need your memories. No memory necessary. <laughs> <laughs> I think you said eighty million years. Maybe it was eighty thousand. No, it had to be a million. Yeah. I'm asking. <laughs>